Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue with our ideas of classification and phylogenetics. Let's begin by thinking about how um, classification has changed through history. Um, Linnaeus, we mentioned previously, um, he was the first person to come up with an idea of classifying by taxonomy, putting things into groups. Uh, he just had plantae and animalia, in other words, animals and plants. Um, it was extended into a three kingdom system with single celled organisms, um, adding in the protista, or sometimes we describe them as protoctista, but uh, plants, animals, and single celled organisms. Um, it was further defined into two empires the eukarya or eukaryota and the prokarya, the prokaryota. Eukaryotes having a true nucleus, prokaryotes no nucleus or no membrane bound organelles. Um, then we started thinking about messing around with different characteristics. Um, we went to four kingdoms, but um, the bacteria or the monera uh, became as important and had a kingdom. Um, 1966, this is the five kingdom system that some people still persist with today. Plantae, animalia, fungi, protista or protoctista, um, and bacteria. Um, eukaryotes uh, uh, versus prokaryotes or prokaryota so you know that's the system that uh, it's, it's officially 50 years old this year folks um carl woes though is the one we have to thank for what we are how i think of it, our current thinking um initially we um went to a six kingdom system by using phylogenetics looking at ribosomal rna and the differences in those um, and we went for six kingdoms, plants, animals, protoctista, and fungi, fine. And then we divided the bacteria into what we call eubacteria and archaebacteria, or sometimes the ancient bacteria. So they said there were six kingdoms, which were of equal sort of height. Now, however, we think we've refined it even further into three what we call domains, and the domains sit above the kingdom. So in one domain, we have the eukarya or eukaryota, the eukaryotes, are things which have a uh, nucleus, and then two different bacterial domains, the archaebacteria and the eubacteria. And this is principally based on when we consider what the differences are, um, sort of to the phylogenetic, looking at biochemical evidence. Um, so here's our three domain tree. Um, these phylogenetic trees often sort of have show you where the branches are for a common ancestor. So uh, the branching here means that the three kingdoms, this is where they, the common ancestor first separated out to give you U bacteria, and then we've got the archaea bacteria and eukaryotes. Um, so we are more closely related to the archaea bacteria than we are the U bacteria. Um, here's another uh, tree sort of showing the different sort of relationships. Again, every time there's a branch, that's showing you that coming off from a different com uh, common ancestor. And those common ancestors may not be existing today, they may be extinct, but we can track back through um, fossil evidence and through looking at um, sort of RNA samples and whatever that we can judge where they are, their differences may have occurred. So here's a little task to have a go at. Um, how closely are these primates related to humans? Um, we are all related to each other. Which ones are we most related to? Pause the video for a moment and have a go at seeing if you can match up which are we are most related to. And you're back in the room. Okay, let's solve this so we can see which ones we're most related to. Uh, obviously, the chimpanzees are most common related. Uh, we're most closely related to. We have a common ancestor most in common with the chimpanzee, least with the lemur. If we look at the phylogenetic tree of that, uh, 50 million years ago was where lemurs and the rest of the primates diverged, whereas seven million years ago, that's our most common sort of ancestor. Seven million years ago. But bear in mind when people talk about, oh yeah. The evolution says humans are um, uh, derived from apes or we, you know we come from apes no what we're actually saying is we have a common ancestor in common with some of the apes so it's the fact that we have a common ancestor with these and with these and with these but further and further back in history uh, you can also look at this another one an evolutionary tree of all vertebrates um, showing that um, we are a most recent common ancestor with other primates um, we have a common ancestor 
here, which allows us to branch into mammals versus birds and snakes. So they have a more recent common ancestor with each other than they do with sort of mammals and so on and further back. Yeah, so we can look at how things are branched off and it gives us a more true idea of which family they might belong in. Okay, another chance to have a go at some questions. Uh, here's some true and false questions. Again, pause here and see if you can match up what the correct answers are. Welcome back. And here we go. Let's solve this. Uh, taxonomy is not phylogeny. It's putting things into class, classes or groups, but it's not based on relationships, which is what phylogeny is. It's concerned with evolutionary relationships. We use DNA and proteins to do this. Phylogeny has not confirmed the conventional five kingdoms, but it's given us either six kingdoms or three domains. Chimpanzee, yes, more closely related to us. Okay, and in response to other uh, requests recently, uh, here's an exam question, which I'll leave you with um, so that you can have a go at, and there's two parts to this, and then we'll pick up this on our next video with the answers before we go on to the next section. So um, here's a passage about classifying water bears or what we call tardigrades. So um, it doesn't give you the keywords and it won't give you keywords in A-level um, to complete uh, this passage. So you need to think about what the words might be the complete passage. Again, an opportunity to pause here. I'm not going to give you the answers at the end of this video, but there is another section coming up. So you might want to pause this, have a go at the answers to this before you go to the next one. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the question, state the meaning of the term phylogeny and explain how phylogeny is related to classification. So notice the keywords, state, so that's one mark for stating a meaning, explain, explain how phylogeny is related to classification, give me a reason why, give, explain why this is because. Okay, answers next time, see you then.